clean cold water defines cutthroat habitat. And numerous developmental and environmental factors threaten the quality of Wyoming's watersheds. These factors, combined with the introduction of non-native species, have imperiled all cutthroat populations and had specific effects on two of the subspecies. Well, the big uh, factors that have led to uh, the decline of uh, cutthroat trout throughout the West, um, obviously uh, the introduction of non-native species, um, particularly rainbow trout and brook trout. Uh, brook trout tend to um, have a competitive edge over cutthroat trout and where the two are found together. Um, in a lot of cases over time, the uh, cutthroat trout will disappear due to competitive exclusion. Uh, rainbow trout, which is a uh, native of the western United States, uh, tends to hybridize with cutthroat trout. So there's um, a deletion of the gene pool as far as uh, admixtures of rainbow trout and, and cutthroat trout. Um, the big water development issues are water diversions, uh, water storage for uh, agricultural use, um, municipal water uses, um, in some cases industrial water uses, and uh, all of those are, are pretty huge impacts when it comes to trying to, uh, to maintain uh, viable populations of cutthroat trout in their associated habitats. Colorado River cutthroat, of, of those three that are hurting right now, is the one that we're really concerned about because most of their habitat is very short segments of stream that could be wiped out by an event like maybe a, an oil spill uh, in a heartbeat. So we're very concerned about the Colorado River cutthroat trout in particular. Well, you know, a lot of the issues um, that have to do with uh, cutthroat trout management in Wyoming are issues that are fairly pervasive throughout the, the, uh, the western United States. And that has to do with, um, with habitat manipulations due to um, uh, water development and uh, Obviously, the introduction of non-native species and the impacts that those two um, issues have on the, uh, the persistence of the different subspecies and species of uh, cutthroat trout in the West. Climate is, is, is a big wild card right now. There's some indication that, uh, uh, that we're seeing some warming in the West, uh, some changes in, uh, in runoff, and, uh, and, and those will likely have some, some impacts on, on cutthroat trout throughout the western United States. Well, I think right now you certainly uh, would be this continued drought. Now, whether that is uh, in direct relation to some of the global warming science that we're seeing out there, uh, it remains to be seen, certainly. But I think probably the big one right now in terms of the Yellowstone cutthroat trout is the lake trout, which is a non-native species in Yellowstone Lake that is hammering uh, the uh, population of spawning uh, cutthroat trout and certainly the reproduction of, of uh, cutthroat trout. And then also I think uh, one of the very keys is the introduction of aquatic nuisance species like whirling disease, which comes from a tube effects worm. The uh, New Zealand mud snail is certainly a concern and there continues to be other concerns with aquatics. And then probably not very far down on that list in terms of uh, threats to cutthroat trout would be development of those headwater streams in terms of industrialization. Certainly road building in headwater streams is one of the very significant things that hammers uh, cutthroat trout populations. Uh, and so we want to continue uh, to make sure that we have uh, pristine headwaters and pristine cool, cold, clear water sources for those trout. And also for agriculture and, and mun municipalities that depend upon uh, cold, clear water. I really think that probably the biggest problem facing cutthroat right now is, is uh, habitat. In recent years, a number of groups have asked the Fish and Wildlife Service to add all of Wyoming's cutthroats to the federal list of threatened and endangered species. There's always a danger um, that, uh, uh, that conditions will change. Uh, by definition, the, you know, the future is uncertain and that uncertainty holds for um, 
or cutthroat trout that we're trying to keep off the, uh, uh, the threatened and endangered species list. Um, you know, there, there's, there's always a demand for, um, uh, for water and, and space and, um, uh, and, and, and obviously, though, you know, whenever you put additional demands on the resources that cutthroat trout need, um, it, uh, it, it, it can have a bearing on, on their status and, uh, um, and, and fish could very well end up uh, being federally listed. Listing simply means failure by the state to manage the species or the subspecies correctly. Listing means loss of control by the state to federal entities that then take control. Um, once, once we lose control, things like water development um, and other economic um, development opportunities become much more onerous um, and burdensome to develop. There's another layer of bureaucracy, another layer of management that really makes it difficult for people to do, uh, for society to flourish. Um, again, we see, we see listing as a measure of failure um, of our management programs over time.